Recession or no recession, that is the question. Since the Federal Reserve started hiking rates back in March of last year, Americans have been fretting about and anticipating a possible economic downturn. And while economists have scaled back their expectations lately, according to the latest Reuters poll, they still see a 55 percent chance the economy will dunk into a recession in the next year. Recession or not, our next three guests have become multimillionaires by investing in and building businesses during incredibly difficult economic times. They don't care, and they say, nor should you. Joining me now is a, a shiver of sharks from ABC Shark Tank. I am so honored to be joined by FUBO CEO, FUBO CEO Damon John, the Corcoran Group founder, Barbara Corcoran, and O'Leary Ventures chairman, Kevin O'Leary. I mean, am I right, you guys? When I hear that people say, oh, it's a terrible time for businesses, I mean, Damon, you started your business in your mom's basement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been through a hundred terrible times. It's always, <laughs> it, it, it's always a time for business if you have something of value. Absolutely. I mean, right, yeah. Barbara? And, and do you ever look at the clock or the economists' reports and say, oh, maybe I shouldn't invest in this? No, company. it's just going to bum you out. What you have to do is make your own road. You have to have your own optimism. You have to decide when you're going to go into something. And the worst times are the best times to, to start a business. Most of the big companies start in bad times. I started mine when New York City was going bankrupt. Everybody folded, and I was one of the few men standing. Come on, it's a great advantage. You have to go against the tide. Kevin, uh, some of the greatest, most incredible companies, uh, IBM, FedEx, were started during mm -hmm. recessions or depressions. And the reason it works out that way is if you're starting at a time when money's tight, and that's certainly the case right now, you have to be very resourceful as an entrepreneur. You've got to solve problems. You have to pivot in a way that when money's free and cheap and zero interest rates, this, you're flush with it. And you make a lot of mistakes because you think, well, it's not going to cost me that much. Now you make a mistake, you go bankrupt. Yeah. So these are tough times, but good times. It's good and bad, but as we were all saying, a great time to start a business is always when you want to start one. That's the key. It's Let not me... about the timing, if I might say. It's always about the individual, whether they can cut it whether they can do it and bring it to the finish Don't get in line. business if you can't get into business when it's hard. So many, yeah. so many going you'll see bad times out. no matter when you start your business. It's going to mm -hmm. come. It's a great, you know, seven-year cycles in the economy and people are debating a recession. This brings us back to when we started together on Shark Tank, 2008, 2009 season. Mm -hmm. Everybody was freaking out because rates were high. Yeah. A recession was upon us, financial crisis, and yet some of the very best deals we ever saw Absolutely. were right then. Absolutely. So you can't be fearful about that. Uh, but, but looking at how you guys started your businesses, yeah. let me take it even earlier than that, because I really want our viewers to understand this. Raise your hand if you ever were a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> That's All three, seriously? Yeah. I knew you two, but I didn't know Barbara. Quick oh, cash. Yeah. Come oh, on, yeah. I was waitress 20 different times. That's how I learned sales. Yeah. And what did you learn specifically Ooh. from being a waiter? Or a I, I learned being a waiter that you didn't pick, get paid off the steaks. You got paid off the appetizers, the alcohol, and the desserts. I also learned always go to the table and ask for the desserts first. Hey, let me take the dessert order. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it uh, in time when you want the food. <laughs> I'll take it off the bill. Man. They You're never took it off the bill. <laughs> so another 15% in I my pocket. I learned about royalties as a bartender because I told those servers, look, if you don't give me half your tips, you're not going to get any drinks back. <laughs> that was the very first royalty. And I learned that if people like you, they tip you heavy, and that's only fair. So I learned to use my charm to get the highest tips. So we're talking about a very difficult economy right now, yeah. but it, it, nevertheless, you're all have your elbow deep into businesses, am yeah. I right? What are you most excited about? Which business at the moment, Damon? Uh, I still love my Bombas business, but I love the fact that all my businesses, the playing field is equal now because they're all starting to use AI. Uh, nobody knew about it real unless you were in the CIA, you know, two, five, ten years ago. And so the playing field is evil, even, and they're now being able to change the way they use their workforce and appeal to their customers. So that's what I love about it. Well, so the socks company Bombas is Bombas using sock. AI. How? Well, because obviously you're now able to grab more, pull more out of what your customer needs. You can crawl into any of their social media aspects or their 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 posts, and you can personalize their messages. And then it comes back to a human. And more importantly, you're able to show all the socks and all the underwear and everything else we're giving away to those in a homeless community and be able to broadcast it out to everybody. Oh, Barbara? My favorite still, I must have embarrassed to admit, is Cousins of Maine Lobster. I love those guys. I met them when they were in business for one month. They had 40,000 sales. They just went by 500. 
million, almost yeah. a thousand, five hundred million yeah. in sales. They are phenomenal success, and they're charming. They're good looking. They flirt with me, and I love getting <laughs> their phone calls every day. <laughs> Kevin, I love divorce now. Oh, I've got a business oh. called Hello Prenup, and it's out of Boston. You're kidding. And it's all online for getting your prenup worked out. I always tell people, look, I love l'amore, hundred percent. But fifty percent of marriages after seven years. They fail because and of financial stress. And your wife is on the phone right now. No, but the whole point is you need a prenup, and I'm here to get it to you. Hello, prenup, my fastest growing Shark Tank deal. I love love, but I also like divorce. I get it coming and get them going. That's the way I look at it. Real estate, Barbara, this is your bailiwick, obviously. Yes. Uh, we got the home sales data today. Um, if people are worried that there isn't enough inventory, and yet... What do you see? You see much higher prices because it's of that. It's tough to find a house, of course, but no inventory is like an insurance policy. If you don't have enough houses to go around, prices continue to go up. And there's nothing that's going to make more houses available while interest rates remain high. Kevin, you have a, an opinion about mortgage rates being as high I as do. They are. I do. I, you know, I th in commercial real estate, uh, in regional banks, where I spend a lot of time supporting my businesses through, their books are 40% commercial real estate. And all of those properties, primarily office in sub markets, are underwater. They have no equity left in them. And we haven't corrected for that yet because they used to get money at 5%. Now it's 11 to 17. And they're highly leveraged as well. So they're Which going to dangerous. zero, Barbara. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Going to this zero, is so good. And because I need more from Damon on AI and so much more. <laughs> Kevin, Barbara, and Damon are staying with us through this commercial break. We are back with our rock star panel of business people. FUBU CEO Damon John, the Corcoran Group founder, Barbara Corcoran, and O'Leary Ventures chairman, Kevin O'Leary. And by the way, Kevin, I need to keep this watch. This, Ooh, don't worry. Okay, it. who, who has the other say, three? You've got say, one. There are three in the United States. Yes. Uh, who has the other three? Well, the, the other two, uh, John Mayer two. has the white gold, the singer? Brady has the rose gold, and I have the yellow gold. Now, we're all supporters of this oh. brand. This is Rolex. Um, I'm a big supporter of what they do. It's a trust in Switzerland, but this watch was rumored to be AI uh, and not real. Because Rolex would never oh, make it's a, a real. watch with, with puzzles and <laughs> it's emotions a beautiful on piece. it. He's a paid salesman for the watch company. Yeah. Come on, let well, off. I, I, you know, I, I don't own any of Rolex because it's not public. Like Coco Golf. Yeah. Um, yeah, you saw how she put that Rolex on the second she won the U.S. Oh, yeah. Open. Damon, let's talk about yeah. retail, whether it's yeah. watches or anything else. Yeah. Obviously, you started it's back. FUBU. In your mother's basement, yeah. you convinced her to mortgage the house. Yes. You never had bank loans. Yes. Nobody would help you, and That's you right. grew it into a multi-million dollar business. Let's talk about retail and how you view it. It's back. Uh, Amazon, 48% up uh, year to date. Uh, the NRF has uh, expected another 4% uh, an increase. Uh, people are at home now. They're working on computers at home. They want to see people. Uh, my staff is probably half the time at a mall during the time they should be working. <laughs> um, but you have to give people a different experience, right? You have to go into a world where you give them an experience. If you Listen, Macy's should right now have a live stream from Macy's. Everybody hooks up into their Instagram. They walk down a runway, and people can buy everything they're wearing once they purchase it in Macy's. Mm -hmm. It's the most popular store in the world, right? So it needs to be a place where people are going and they're experiencing something they cannot anyplace else. Mm -hmm. But the shopping malls are in trouble. These big box stores aren't doing so well. What the most popular uh, space to find right now is small retail. Yeah. And they're acting differently. They're almost like a showroom for what they it's sell. They're not, yeah, a quick thing. But, Pop -ups. but people are back. People love to shop. Everybody wrote it off. Guess what? Everybody was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I find the new small formats in sync with what Barbara's saying. I'm, I'm getting into a restaurant business. Actually, it started here in New York. Uh, Brooklyn Dumplings, 400 to 600 square feet, automated, so less staff, food costs are lower. But I'm finding demand for that in every city because it's a small footprint. But so, so competitive to find those spaces. Everybody wants them. Of course, but that's the new retail. But I'm a believer in retail now. In my companies, I want to be 50% direct to consumer, 50% direct to retail, to consumers. I'm acquiring customers that way. Will you accept Bitcoin at these, at these pop-up areas? These, I these would. I, I'm, I believe, although there's all these shenanigans and all these rogue you know, crypto cowboys, they're all going to be gone in a few years. The SEC is running around the world after all of them. But I believe in the potential of digital payment systems. Bitcoin being the granddaddy, Ethereum, there's many others. The potential of that is not going away and people want this asset class. So after all these trials are over and all these founders, cowboy guys are gone, it'll be a real business. I lost $50,000 in Bitcoin. I don't like the whole thing. 
to get. I like it. I think it, I think it's going to be a good business. Uh, I, I'm dabbling in it. I'm educating myself more on it. Uh, but he's dabbling right. is I, is code for losing money, by the <laughs> No, no, no. no. I'm, actually, I'm actually up a little bit. Uh, but you know, Kevin is right. You know, they're always going to clear a lot of the the people out of the way, and sooner or later it will level off. It's too big right now, and too many people are aware. You think it's just going to go away? I highly doubt no. it. What? Barbara's just got real estate. When you get to her house, you've never seen it. Her dining room table is made out of gold bars. <laughs> So it's just, she's like my mother. It's just gold and real estate. That's it. If she's she silver. At least we're she, trading uh, still she, nickels. She has like, to unlike, you could say what you want, but unlike Bitcoin, the reason I put all my money in real estate, it's a very slow way to get very, very rich. You can't say that about Bitcoin. Well, we, we saw what happened not with the, steady as you the go, real estate sure. implosion where everybody said, oh, it'll take too long. It, it can't. It, it's not a bubble because it yeah. takes forever to sell real estate. she's saying residential real estate, real estate not yeah. commercial, right? Residential yeah. or retail, real estate? I like commercial. retail. I like industrial. I like storage space. I like apartment rentals. I like it all except for commercial. It's Let me ask trouble. about the stock market because at the moment we have a sell-off right now. Yeah. Dow is down 376 points. But how much do you guys invest in individual stocks? I mean, I'm into people, uh, into companies that create a universe you know Apple creates a universe you go in there you you, you, you buy something that has a fitness co component like a uh, you know a Peloton yeah. you watch TV and uh, you have your watch on and you can track your child uh, I'm into things that create a universe so you don't lose the kid that's right <laughs> Barbara I like investing in stocks but I limit myself to 30 percent I like finding my own gods to serve and for me that's real estate i used to invest only in new york the last five years i've spread out into three different cities where the returns are better because new york is in a cities? bad pittsburgh do you know pittsburgh of course sure. indianapolis and columbus mm. those give you 20 percent returns per year if you buy smartly and i just love those towns columbus ohio columbus yeah. ohio that's right. who would know smack in the middle smart of smart people there yeah, that's right and channel six that's where i got my on-air start ah you better run back and buy some real estate. <laughs> abc kevin I have about 50% of my portfolio in equities, but I now use indexes, and I created most of them. It's O shares, and so I have European indexes, tech indexes, a derivative of the S&P. I want diversity, and I, stock picking is really hard, really, really hard. Rules-based indexing, I think, is the future. That's for me, so I don't worry about it. I, I, you know, the market's volatile, but I own the best stocks in the index, and I just sit back and let let them do their Come thing. Come with me into real estate. I could pick smartly for you. Listen, real estate, Barbara. I have third, a third of my portfolio in <laughs> yeah, real estate. So I, like I like picking it. individuals at the same time. Amazon's not going anywhere. Now they catch us on Ring. They feed us at Whole Foods, and then they deliver our boxes. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> it's the universe. A little bit of an FTC issue yeah, today. Yeah, yes. Yeah, How about FTC? that? Yeah. yeah we'll Would you buy that. it here? It's down about four percent. I will. I will. I probably will. Yeah. Well, you're on the air right now, so you can't make a trade until after the show. Uh, <laughs> Is that how it works? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you guys totally avoid? Yeah. Yeah. I, I try and avoid things that I don't understand at all. Like yeah. Buffett. You know, it, it's sort of, if I, if I can't get it in 90 seconds, mm. I don't invest in it. If, if you can't explain it to me and you tell me, look, this is something you got to own and I don't get it, there's no chance I'm putting it down. I have way anything that's a fad that, period, uh, if it's a fad, everybody talking about it. And again, just like Kevin, if I have to educate myself on it, I have enough of what I currently have that I still have to educate myself on. And for me, it's just a matter of trust. I trust the individual, I invest. If I don't trust them, I don't. Yeah. And I also don't invest in anything that has anything to do with Kevin on the show. <laughs> uh, just what it is. Well, um, I think that this is worthless now because, so. you know, so I, I, I may just have want to, to say this. It's looks a great, great color for you. you. Thank you. It's a yeah. perfect yeah. color for you, really, with your hair. Well, I, I wish green were the perfect color for the markets right now, but yeah. we, we have a sell off here. I want to thank Damon John, thank Barbara Corker. Thank you. Kevin O'Leary. What a great conversation, <laughs> all of you.